Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the favorite fiction books tag. And if you've watched any of my videos before, you may already know that I am a stan of Alex from What Page Are You On? Uh, I'll put a picture somewhere. I love his account and he actually just tagged me in this video. And I've been thinking about doing this one and so I'm glad I got a tag um, to, you know, give me another excuse to do it. So yeah, I'm really excited for this video. Uh, it was a bit tough to figure out what I wanted to do for my top 10 books. So the rules of this tag are that it has to be 10 novels, all from the 21st century, no canonical classics, and your number one choice must actually be your number one choice, which is hard for me to figure out. And one of your 10 must be linked in some way to somebody else's list. So I'm gonna tie my list to Alex's and I'll talk about that in a bit. I recently got back into reading in the last year or two. And so a lot of the books in my top 10 list are very current books. And so you're probably seeing these already. You might have read them if you if you stay up to date with like newer releases and everything. I'm um, hoping you know going into the next year. Some one of my goals is to hopefully find some backlist titles, and I'm sure I'll be you know falling in love with those as well, and hopefully be able to talk about some older titles in my uh, videos. But as of right now, most of these have been published in the last year or two. Yeah, all of these books have been published within the last year or two, except for one of them, um, which is really interesting to me. And I know, you know, one of the goals of this tag is to have it be all books published in the 21st century, but I didn't really expect that. I thought I read some more older books, but I guess not. These are in no particular order, except my last book will be what I think is my favorite book um, for this tag. And I've talked about a lot of these books already on my channel, so sorry if you're, uh, if you watch me frequently and you already know about some of these, uh, but there's some new ones that I haven't talked about, so... Yeah, I'm excited. So let's get into it. Oh, but before we do, I forgot I had my beer here. I haven't had this one in a while, but I know I really like it. It's just a solid, like, easy drinking, everyday kind of IPA. Um, nothing too mind-blowing, but I really enjoy it. And I like Ballast Point Brewing as well. I think that they distribute nationally. So I know, like, I've seen this one in, like, all grocery stores here in Arizona, but I think they distribute all over the place. So you should be able to find it. Highly recommended if you like IPAs. Um, yeah, okay, so now let's really get into the tag. So the first book I have that I wanted to mention is Normal People by Sally Rooney. I absolutely adore this book. Um, I know there's been a lot of discourse about Sally Rooney um, with the Hulu show coming out that came out a couple months ago and just kind of thinking about millennial fiction and what it means and the merit of it and who's doing it well I guess and that's tied to some other uh, books in the stack as well but I think so this is one of the books that really really got me back into reading. Um, I remember I read this in May 2019 for a book club at my local bookstore, which I go to every month now and I absolutely love it. And this was the first pick. And I remember this is one of the first books that really got me back into reading like on a daily basis. Um, I'd already been kind of getting more into it, but then I read this one and went to the book club discussion and talked about it. And I was just like, I don't know, blown away at the power of talking about a novel after reading it with a group of people, or I mean, even now I'm learning through talking on booktube that it helps so much in getting your thoughts out and thinking through a book uh, more deeply. And I think what Sally Rooney does really well, I mean, m many people have already discussed this book to death, but for me, I just loved the interiority of the plot. I loved the complicated, you know, messy romance between Marianne and Connell. I think Sally Rooney has some really interesting insights into millennials. And this book, you know, viewed through an angle of class, I think it also has some really interesting insights. Um, I just thought it was so good and I was so glued to it. And I thought Marianne and Connell were such complex and messed up characters that it was a really illuminating seeing, you know, uh, this relationship in which as a reader, you have a distance to their relationship and you just want to, you know, scream at them to just say what you feel and please just do it. But I mean, as a millennial myself, and even just as a human, that's sometimes difficult to, you know, converse with people, especially with, you know, social media and texting and just having that kind of barrier to developing relationships. Yeah, I just love this book and I loved conversations with friends as well. I think I like this one a little bit more, maybe just because I read it first, but can't wait to see what her third book will be. It's gonna be everywhere based on the light for this one and I'm just really curious to see what she tackles next and hopefully doesn't um, succumb to any, you know, pressures of the third novel now that she's a really established author. So yeah, love this one. Um, I know many people probably already read this one, but if you haven't, I highly recommend it. Next, a completely different book that I also really love um, is Fernanda Melchor's Hurricane Season. This book is one of the most challenging and gut-wrenching and bleak and just hard books I've ever read, but it really opened my mind to what fiction can be. And it's probably the most original book I've ever read in my life. Um, it's basically told in like a true crime format in which 
the book opens on the death of a woman named the witch and um there's a i believe if i remember correctly there's a group of boys that discover her body and the rest of the novel is told in four long chapters in which there's no paragraph breaks and often sentences that run a page or longer. It doesn't read too heavily in terms of it being difficult to understand, I would say. You follow four characters that are all related in some way to this death, and each of their stories is gut-wrenching and powerful in its own right, but it's also um, all tied together by this crime uh, um, against this woman. And I just thought it was such a great and difficult novel that stares violence right in its face, and she does not censor anything in this book. It's very difficult to read sometimes because you're reading people that are at their worst and people being terrible to others and the effects that poverty and uh, misogyny have in this community and it's just a really enjoying is the wrong word but i just think it's such a great book and i think if you're a fan of true crime style books but you're looking for fiction this is a really good one and i think she's just a really brilliant writer yeah this is a hard recommend for everyone i think um definitely look into i mean almost like all trigger warnings that I can think of would apply to this book but it definitely you know if you're a little bit hesitant about it I would do some more research and maybe think about um whether you actually want to pick it up I wouldn't recommend it to anyone but uh yeah I think it's a great book and definitely one that has never hasn't left my mind since I read it earlier this year and I don't foresee it ever leaving my mind next I have A Cosmology of Monsters by Sean Hamill and this book uh, I, I think is underrated it came out last year I think around Halloween and I absolutely love this book when I read it. It's um, this kind of horror, literary, weird fiction blend. It follows a family that's being haunted by supernatural forces. And in the book, um, they lose their father. And you kind of see the fallout after they lose their father. And this supernatural force that's following them, particularly the young son, Noah. And I just thought it was such a brilliant look at a family that's suffering from many... Um, different traumas and grappling with it but you know looking at that through the lens of like a supernatural gaze and how a supernatural force you know inserting itself into that trauma what it does to the family and I just thought it was such a really it was such a unique story I've never read anything like this and I think it's a great pick for Halloween because the family in question of this in this novel they um, reopen their haunted house like a walk through haunted house where people jump out at you and stuff which I, I loved going to as a kid and so it was fun reading about that in a novel um, I used to go like every single year to haunted houses here in Arizona. I don't know. I've never seen that used in a story before. And so, yeah, if you're looking for um, something kind of spooky, but not too spooky, I guess, um, this is a really good one. If you like H.P. Lovecraft, this is basically like a love letter to Lovecraft, who I personally haven't read, but I do want to maybe check out his work. I know he's like a problematic person, but I, I am interested to see kind of what his work entails as it often, you know, comes into other novels as well. So yeah, highly recommend this one for Halloween season. It's definitely underrated. And I just think it's a really good book for even people that are just like, you know, more literary style readers. Um, highly recommend it. Okay, next, I have the massively popular Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asaman. Um, I know that this book has gotten its criticism. Uh, and it's, you know, seen as quite problematic to many people. I read this one, I think two or three years ago, this is another book that kind of introduced me back into my love of reading. And I remember I was on a vacation in Mexico uh, with my family and I was just, you know, by the pool and I couldn't put this book down. It was one of my first, you know, truly like gay reads. And so just reading about, I don't know, a romance with gay men in it, it was just like, I was gripped to it because I can relate to it. Yeah, I couldn't put it down and I did not see the end coming. This book like devastated me when I finished it. I felt bad because like we were on a vacation for a couple of days in Mexico and I was just like in a terrible mood after I read this book. But I just thought it was, you know, like achingly beautiful. And uh, yeah, it was just a really powerful story. And I, I just remember being like so moved by the language here. I think it is beautifully written. Just had to include it here because it just really had a profound impact on me. And I just think it's a really gorgeous story and I'll never forget it. And I just, yeah, I had to include it here. Next I have The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. You can see my ring light. <laughs> this just won the Pulitzer Prize this year. And I absolutely love this book. I think it's so brilliant. and when I read it, it just felt like an instant classic, like truly an instant classic. It's hard for me to explain kind of how, why I think that, but I think it's just in the sense that this is a timeless story that's so relatable to our present moment. This is gonna be taught for years to come. Like it's so relevant to our present moment, but what's unfortunate is that it follows a young boy who is a high school senior and he's preparing to go to a local college. He's a black boy. And one day he is um, hitchhiking and he gets pulled over by a cop with with the driver and he's taken to this reform school called the Nickel Academy 
And what's um, really devastating about the story is that the Nickel Academy in this uh, novel is based on a real reform school in which the students at the school were treated horrifically and killed, and they're still finding remains of these children um, to this day. It's in Florida, or it was in Florida. And this story was just so devastating and gripping at the same time, and I couldn't put it down, and I was just so... My, it was like gut-wrenching the entire time, but I think it's so necessary to read. And it has one of the best endings I've ever read in a book in the, in the sense of it being so unexpected and moving. Ugh, like, I don't know. I just, you, if you haven't read this book, you have to read it. I think it's so critical. Um, and I hope that it's taught for years to come. And there's just so much to learn from this book. I think it's so smartly written and it's very concise. I think it's like 200 pages. Um, yeah, just a little over 200 pages. And you can tell that Colson Whitehead wrote this book with so much passion. Yeah, I don't know. I can like talk about this book forever, but just please pick it up and read it and sit with it. Okay, next. So I know I'm supposed to tie my list with another person, and so I'm going to tie it to Alex's list. And I know he mentioned um, how he's drawn to loneliness in literature, and that was the influence for one of his picks in his list. So the next five books I've all talked about on my channel already, but if you know me, I love myself some loneliness and seclusion in my, in my fiction, and these all have that to some varying degree, including my favorite book of the year. So first I'll start with Mona Awad's Bunny. This one ties right into like my horror literary heart. Um, this one follows an MFA student who gets involved with this clique of girls and they have these seances and they call each other Bunny and I'll leave it there, but it's a really great novel about uh, what your mind will do to compensate for the loneliness that you feel and the effects of that on you. Um, told through a, you know, a supernatural kind of crazy fun uh, lens. If you like like Mean Girls or Heathers, you kind of get that's a similar vibe in this book, but I thought it was really more um, heartbreaking than those movies are. So yeah, I thought it was going to be kind of just like a fun like thriller romp, but there's a lot that Mona Watt has to say about um, MFAs and loneliness and um, the kind of culture that these women present. So loved it. Next, I have Luster by Raven Leilani. I love this book. You know, it's another one of those millennial fiction books. Um, Claire from Claire Reads Book, she did a like phenomenal video about millennial fiction. She's done two actually, and she can talk about this book much better than me, but I just know when I was reading this book, just on like a sentence level, the prose is just like, like chef's kiss, like insanely good. Um, but it follows this black woman named Edie, and she's in her early 20s, just trying to find her way as an artist. Um, and she gets involved in this open relationship, and things go from there. And I just thought it was such a great look at uh, class and race and sexuality and you know the combination of those things and you know as a millennial myself kind of the pressure that we feel to know what we want to be just a really relatable novel and I just absolutely loved it please read this one if you haven't already I know it's been all over booktube and bookstagram lately but I mean I can't talk about this book enough so okay next I have my queen Otessa Moshfeg I was trying to figure out which book I wanted to pick for this I love all her books so much for different reasons but I th I think this one is the most accessible and I just loved it so much that I think I'm just gonna go with this one for my list. But this recommendation comes with all of her work. I think she's incredible. Um, this book follows a woman who decides to hibernate for a year to kind of give herself a cleanse um, after some trauma that she goes through in her life that you learn about later. Um, but so she takes a bunch of pills at the hand of a very irresponsible um, psychiatrist who gives her basically anything she asks for. And so she sleeps her year away. But what's so, brilliant about this novel is that the plot still feels propulsive even though it's about a woman that just is sleeping constantly and so it was a really sad book i found it's darkly comedic but as the novel goes on it gets more and more um not sinister but just bleak and sad as you learn more about why uh the narrator of this book is doing what she's doing and just seeing kind of her interactions with, with other people it just gets um pretty you know heavy but i think this book is so smart in what it's trying to do and I think it does it so well. And there's no book I've ever read that's like this one. Tessa Moshfeg, she's really good at, you know, getting in the head of a, you know, seemingly unlikable person and, you know, putting them on full display and, you know, asking the reader, have you not thought sa the same things that this person is thinking? Have you not felt the same way? And if you haven't, you might be lying to yourself, at least to some extent. And I just think she's always, she's, um, you know, having fun with what she's doing. And I love, you know, being able to feel that through the page with Tessa Moshfeg, but yeah. You know I love her. Definitely check check her out. She's not for everyone, but for me, she is just queen. Okay, two more, y'all. The next one I have is Apartment 
by Teddy Wayne, and this one follows another MFA student who's unnamed, and he's in this, uh, you know, competitive program in which he's kind of um, struggling as a writer, and he befriends this guy named Billy, who is a natural, like, gifted writer, and they establish his friendship after Billy sticks up for the narrator when the whole class is, like, dragging the narrator's uh, manuscript or something to pieces, basically, and... Billy ends up moving in with the narrator and their friendship gets very complicated and things happen and I just I'll leave it there but I thought this was another amazing look at loneliness and what a person will do to compensate for it and the effects that that has on them eventually getting in some kind of you know friendship or relationship with someone and the devastating effects that can come from you know potentially losing it or jealousy or various other uh, forces on the relationship and this is another slim book. It's kind of like a literary thriller in the sense of nothing violent happens in this book, but it was just so like, damn. And I, I always think about this book and I initially gave it four stars for some reason, but the more I've pondered this book, I definitely consider it a five star read now. I highly recommend it if you like books about writers, loneliness, and like complicated friendships. This is a great book for that. And finally, uh, I was trying to figure out which of these books is my favorite, I would say. Um, and I think Real Life by Brandon Taylor is my favorite book maybe of all time. Um, this book is just so perfectly written in my eyes. The prose is phenomenal. Brandon Taylor's characterization and examination of race and sexuality, like through the lens of a campus novel, is just so damn good. Like I remember every single page here, I was just like, ooh, like, like, ooh, like that, the, the chill feeling that you have when you're reading a good book. Like this was every single page of this book. And it's told over the course of one weekend in which the main character, Wallace, he has various interactions with his peers, and he's generally a lonely uh, guy himself, and he's just trying to figure out what he, what he wants to do in this graduate program, like whether he wants to stay in it or not. And he gets sexually involved with one of his friends, and you later learn about you know more of his trauma from his past and how that's influenced his current life. And it's just a really great, like, I don't know. It's just like a perfect book in my mind. It's just, I have like really no complaints about it. I loved every single thing about it it's um it gets heavier as you know you read along but just brandon's such a brilliant writer and i can't wait to see what he comes out with next because i will read anything that he puts out like anything i'm reading it he's that good and this one was just shortlisted for the booker and i was so excited about it because i just want this book to be in everyone's hands and he's just an also really funny person if you, you should follow him on twitter if you don't he's so smart this book is just excellent I don't know. I'm gonna leave it there. That about does it for my favorite fiction books tag. If you want to do this tag, I tag you. So until next time, cheers.